Welcome back. Today we're going to do another valve adjustment. This time we're going to do it on a 2000 Cummins turbo diesel. So this is a 24 valve engine. Um, if you look at where I'm at on here, I'm on the driver's side, the front corner of the engine. We have this information tag that gives us everything we need to do a valve adjustment. It's got the firing order. It's got the valve lash specs, which there's wires in the way, so they're kind of hard to read on this one. And it tells you to set the lash cold. So it also gives you the horsepower rating of the engine. So this one is a 215 horsepower engine. Uh, idle speed, all that good stuff. So anyway, I've got the firing order, I've got the valve lash spec, and we'll go ahead and get started on the engine itself. For tools, I've got a socket and ratchet that fits my alternator. This one happens to be a 7 8 depending on if yours has been replaced or is original. It may be slightly different. The center of this Allen is a 5 millimeter. The outside is a 14 millimeter. And that's it. So here, I'll show you this real quick so you'll kind of see what's going on. You can use a ratchet to turn this engine over. So as I turn this ratchet, you'll actually see the valve train move. Okay. Now this only works if you turn the belt counterclockwise though. If you do that, the belt drive catches the crank pulley hard enough to actually spin it over. Now using the companion cylinder method, I'll watch cylinder number six for where the intake and exhaust just start to cross over. And I think I'm actually kind of right there. Yep. So the intake just valve the intake just closed, the exhaust is starting to open. We're actually rolling this motor backwards. But because six is up, that means that one is in its set point. Now we've got 20 thousandths lash on the exhaust and 10 on the intake. So I'll take my feeler gauge, I've got my 10 thousandths. I'm going to try to slip it in between the rocker bridge on this engine. So we've got two valves operated by the same rocker arm. I'm just going to take this feeler gauge. And it's kind of hard to line up. Set it in there. And... It should be just a slight pull, no play in the rocker arm, and this this engine has not been set in a very long time, and it was still good there. So next I'll pull my 20, check the exhaust, and same deal there. Uh, honestly, this engine's probably not been set in like 10 years. I don't know how many miles have been put on it in that amount of time, but it's not been set in a very long time. I was expecting all of these to be out of adjustment. Okay, so we'll go back to rolling it over. We just did six just crossed over, which means that three should probably be next because we're rolling backwards. We're watching that intake close and the exhaust just started to open so we're right there on three is on top dead center on the crossover so that means we set four so same deal here <laughs> and that feels good Switch over to the exhaust. Okay, so here we go. The exhaust has got some play here. This one actually needs adjustment. You can see the intake really needs a little bit on this one too. So the intake is just a little bit on the loose side. It's still got some pretty good play when we, when we got it set there. Normally if you're setting your valves on a regular interval, you only have to adjust about one valve in the engine. I'm kind of expecting this one to need most of them set. 
Okay, so I loosen up the lock nut. So we want to go tighter. I'm just going to give it a small turn there. Snug it up. And now I've got a nice light drag all the way across there. So it didn't take much of an adjustment, but we did take a couple thousandths out. Make sure that that's snug. Go over to the other side. Same deal there. Loosen it up. Give it just a little bit. And that one's right where it should be now too. That's perfect. All right, so cylinder four was out of adjustment. Now we'll watch this thing coming back around. So we should see cylinder number five back here. Do it next. Intake valve is closing. Okay, exhaust valve just started to open. So that was cylinder five. That means we can set cylinder two. Here, that one's just a little bit loose. Not much of a turn there. And there we go, that one's perfect now. Get it locked down good, and it still feels right. So we'll move over to the exhaust, right there. Okay, so we just watched cylinder number five. Now we'll watch cylinder number one. Intake valve is just closing. Exhaust valve just started to move. So that means we can set six. Ah, six is the difficult one. This. And it's loose. So six is unfortunately in need of adjustment on this one. The exhaust on six is actually good. Actually, that's nice. So that was one. We'll now watch four. So we're going to watch for. Intake closing. Exhaust just starts to open. Means we can set three. A little bit loose. that perfect there okay so that one's good next we'll watch cylinder two here so we can set five So valves just crossed. Now we'll check five. That one actually feels good. Actually, that one feels good too. So five is all right. So one and five are okay. The rest of them we've made adjustments on. And okay, next we take our valve cover. 
kind of angle it back in there. sure all, all your hold down bolts work. Start them all by hand first. Now I usually start in the center. Just hold the ratchet. You can even use a quarter inch drive. These are just a 10 mil. If you noticed when I was putting this valve cover in and out, well actually I had it out before I started. But this heater hose there, you sometimes have to manipulate it a little bit to get the valve cover in and out. Okay, there we go. You don't have to kill these things tight. After you get the rest of them snug down, just make sure that they're all still snug. And there you are. That's your valve adjustment. So this thing should be good to go.